SCP-4840, the demon Lancelot and the flying city of Autopapadopolis. It's the SCP universe is massive. Not only in size, of course, but also in scope. Oh, the oh, there are thousands and thousands of cataloged anomalies with countless more waiting to be found, or only mentioned in myths. Things we refer to as anomalous inevitably interact with one another, and some civilizations we've looked at already could be considered entirely anomalous themselves. SCP-4840 contains a story about the ancient past, and includes mentions of a large number of SCPs we're familiar with. It's also a bit of a follow-up to SCP-4812, Wrath, which I've covered previously. Mm -hmm. I'll do my best it. to provide some short explanations or references as we go, but viewing previous videos in this series will likely help out a lot. SCP-4840 itself <laughs> is an ancient, abandoned, floating city located roughly eight kilometers above an empty region in the Russian Arctic. Sounds the city familiar. is around five and a half kilometers in diameter, and while the architecture of the city suggests that it predates any known civilization, it was clearly constructed using advanced techniques and materials for the time, such as gas lamps. The city also bears markings that seem to be a long-dead human language, a precursor to ancient Greek and other Mediterranean languages, not found anywhere else in the world. Foundation linguists that have deciphered the language have determined that the city was once called Autopapadopoulos, roughly translating to City of the First Father, and over 100,000 people once lived here. There is no evidence that a single event That's led it. to its decline, but rather that the population people. simply left over an extended period after the loss of its first and only leader. The city is divided into four quadrants, all connected by a large central hub. These quadrants were populated based on craft, with blacksmiths and metallurgists in one, engineers and designers in another, farmers and bakers in the third, and artisans and craftsmen in the last. Each quadrant also possessed its own local center of governance, located near the central hub. The central hub contains three large stone temples, designated the Temple of Sunrise, Temple of Sunset, and Temple of Night, with a larger, ornately designed Great Hall that was likely used as the seat of the city's power. Underneath this Great Hall is a large stone door, completely inaccessible to Foundation personnel. The door can be opened, but individuals who attempt to pass through feel a building tension that overcomes their bodies, describing it as an increasingly uncomfortable feeling of guilt and regret, often accompanied by panic and anxiety, capable of incapacitating anyone who presses on. Prior to 1933, the city was hidden from view and human perception by unknown anomalous means, but since then it has been rendered visible to the naked eye and to radar equipment. Obviously, that's no good for the Foundation, so they've installed scrambling devices and cloud cover generators, yep. as well as physically moved the city to its current remote location to help conceal it. The city of Autopopadopolis is completely abandoned, aside yeah, from two entities, with it, really. SCP-4840-A and 4840-B. A is an elderly male human of nondescript build and uncertain ethnicity. Genetic testing has revealed likely Mesopotamian ancestry, but his genetic markers have no apparent pre-ancestral linkage, suggesting that yeah. either he's some sort of alien or he is a genetic precursor to intelligent humans on Earth. He speaks numerous languages, including modern ones, is capable of controlling the general species. movement of the floating city, and has some degree of limited local omniscience. He, including modern ones, is of alien, or he is a genetic precursor to intelligent humans on Earth. He speaks numerous languages, including modern ones, 
is capable of controlling the general movement of the floating city oh, okay. and has city. some degree of limited local omniscience. He is capable of describing events taking place far away that he would otherwise have no knowledge of, although he can't describe specifics or individuals involved in these events. Hmm. Finally, That's he is the only individual capable of passing through the stone door underneath the Great Hall, an area he refers to as the Old Library. The other entity, B, is a massive, vaguely humanoid figure that is currently lying unmoving in the ruins of the Temple of Sunset. It possesses a human torso ending in six legs, with six severely distended arms, each ending in a rough metal clasp affixed to a chain connecting to a large iron flail at its end. It is roughly 13 meters in height, what? but is only visible <laughs> using thermal lenses. Trying to visualize A says that the entity is dead, but it continues to output a constant, unchanging amount of heat. It also bears markings consistent with those found on SCP-2254, which appear to be oh, some kind of Abel? sign or sigil. The sigil is similar to those found in other pre-antediluvian sites, specifically those concerning a redacted SCP, the Royal House of Apollyon. Here we have our first major reference, a connection to SCP-4812 and SCP-2254. To recap, in 4812 we heard about the Sky Kings of Old Europe, the leaders of an expansive and powerful kingdom of conquerors in the ancient past. The Sky Kings were all members of the Great House of Apollyon, the first of which was Harion I von Apollyon, who was said to have descended from the blood of the King of Crimson Skies, often called Asen, the First Man. When Saurus VIII von Apollyon grew bored and launched a war of conquest across the sea against the fairy folk, the kidnapped Fey Princess cursed him and his kingdom. The king's son, Saurus IX, appointed four great knights to defend his kingdom from any retribution from the fair folk. They were Lahire the Fierce, Lancelot the Cunning, Hector the Stalwart, and Ogier the Faithful, and they each ended up becoming twisted by the princess's curse. Based on the title, you of course know that Lancelot is involved with 4840, but SCP-2254 is actually Lahire the Fierce. 2254 is invisible to the naked eye, roughly 13 meters in height, with distended arms and six legs. This all sounds pretty familiar, and to top it off, the image provided for Lahire is pretty close to 4840B as well as the mention that the markings found on B are the same as those found on 2254. As for the fate of Hector and Ogier, we may never know. Autopapadopoulos was first discovered in 1933 by a British airman flying from London to Oslo over the North Sea. When reports of the sighting went public, the Foundation and the Royal Conservatory for Public Perception spread info claiming that the airman was drunk and hallucinating at altitude <laughs> to cover it up. The Foundation then went into he was drunk sending was a team fired. by hot air balloon led by Captain Francis Pike. In his exploration journal, Pike describes looking out over the city like looking at Rome from a high hill. Upon closer inspection, though, its abandoned and decrepit state revealed itself. Upon landing, they were met by 4840A, who welcomed them to the city and introduced himself as the city's steward. As they toured the streets, Pike describes the construction as finer than any city he's ever seen in his life. It's they passed by the ruins of the Temple of Sunset, and Pike writes that he had a strange and uncanny feeling as he looks at the place. The group dines in the Great Hall, as the man expresses his appreciation for their visit. They briefly explain what the Foundation is to him, but he says that he already knows, and had known <laughs> for some time. Already know? He what also says that to? there are old secrets kept in this city that must be kept they safe. Are omnipotent. Pike writes that speaking to the old man is like speaking to a friend you've known your whole life, 
a close companion whose company you've missed dearly. The group slept in large, extravagant rooms, much larger than the room the old man sleeps in. The following section describes the large amount of imagery and iconography within the city, most of which is contained in the three temples. In the entryway to the main hall of the Temple of Sunrise, a mural shows two naked children standing at a tree line, seemingly nervously watching the horizon, with a wolf and bear standing behind them protectively. On the wall opposite the mural is a figure with a flaming sword, the Gate Guardian. In the main hall oh, itself, oh, there are yeah, three murals. On the far wall speak. is a brilliant sunrise, uh, with the city of Papadopoulos in the foreground. Standing He's supposed to be guarding... Um, uh, uh, the Garden of Eden? Well, that's at least... I think theorized... I can't remember that. It's been a while since I looked at that SCP. The Gate Garden. I don't even remember the number. What was it like? Was it a thousand? What was it? Zero 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 one. I think they said they could see like a forest or something if you look through the gate because the gate is basically open and it's just standing there. Just uh, anything that comes near it gets killed instantly. And in the front of the sunrise is a golden man and two others by his side, with a third set off from the rest. The man is holding a long rod with a silver point, wearing a shining crown. In the sky above them is a bronze dragon with green eyes and words on its side reading, They will know what is. Excuse me. The identity of these figures will become clear they later on. They know what is. The mural on the eastern wall depicts a meeting in the Great Hall, with the golden man standing at the foot of a throne and two other figures standing on each side. The third figure from the other mural is absent. Before the golden man is a king in crimson robes with a flaming crown extending a hand of friendship. The one and only Scarlet King. Mm. Beside the Scarlet King is a naked woman covered by a snake, a man made of metal, and a sorcerer in deep purple robes, alongside others. The woman is SCP-336, also known as Lilith, a figure oh, okay. from Jewish mythology said to be Adam's first wife prior to Eve. The man made of metal is Robert Bumaro, the head of the Church of the Broken God, and the sorcerer is Dr. Wondertainment, or the figure that would come to be known as Dr. Wondertainment, at least. On the western wall, a mural shows the golden man sitting on his throne, with an iron crown hovering above his head. The crown is inlaid with words of an unknown language and set with a shining white jewel. We'll be hearing plenty more about this crown later. Behind the golden man are several large figures, one made of gears and steel, one made of flesh and blood, one made of ice and stone, one made of stars, and another made of eyes. Stars. The one of gears and steel is, of course, Mechane also known as the Broken God, and the one of flesh and blood is Yaldabaoth, Mekane's counterpart and an important figure in Sarkic lore. The one made of ice and one made of stars are as yet unidentified, but the one made of eyes is meant to depict SCP-3125. I covered that one in my video on anti-memetics, but basically it's a massive entity that partially intersects with our reality and erases anyone that gains any knowledge of it from existence. Oh, okay. It seems the people of Autopapadopolis were not only familiar with this entity, but also decided to put it on a mural. The last figure on this mural is a young woman with long, brilliant white hair hanging in the air, pointing to the south. This is SCP-179, an entity located in our solar system that warns the foundation of any extraterrestrial threats approaching us from outer space. The final wall of the Temple of Sunrise contains no mural, but instead the words, For not the sea to swallow them, and the long dark approach. 
The entryway to the mm, ruined okay. Temple of Sunset contains detailed drawings of cities and towns in and around Autopapadopolis, as well as a map of the city itself. It seems at one point the city was surrounded by large walls, with small towns and villages next to these walls. To the east of the city was a river with another town and farmlands, with the words, the lands of men, emblazoned on the side of the same bronze dragon from before, on top of the mural. An arrow points to the southeast, with the words, lands of the blood kings and necromancers, and another arrow points west, with words reading, the far strange west. Based on SCP-4812, like, we what are y'all talking what existed about? in the West during this time, as the Conquerors went to war with the Fair Folk, who were also involved with the war with the Children of the Night, SCP-1000. The land of the Blood Kings and Necromancers refers to the Davites, a civilization ruled by anomalous individuals and steeped in blood sacrifice, slavery, and magic rituals. Oh, that sounds nice. The interior of the Temple of there. Sunset is similar to the Temple of Sunrise, but much of the main hall has been destroyed by the fallen corpse of 4840B. There is a single mural remaining, showing the golden man with the iron crown sitting atop a white horse. Legions of men and women armed with weapons stand behind him, and on both sides of him are two figures, one holding a black sword, the other a green rod. The golden man is holding a long silver lance in his hand. Across from the man is a scene of storm clouds and lightning, growing more dramatic as it approaches a collection of small humanoid figures, light green in coloration, with brilliantly colored clothing. These would be the Fae, the people that Saurus VIII conquered and brutalized. The figures are each depicted with six eyes in two vertical columns which, interestingly, also seems to be the same configuration as 4840B and Lahir the Fierce. Behind them is something oh, large day, and mottled gray, but it's cut off by a collapsed wall. The Temple of Night is the smallest of the three, only containing a single level. Info from 4840A suggests that portions of this temple do run underground, possibly connecting with the structure beneath the Great Hall. The entryway of the temple contains depictions of barely visible entities concealed within a forest at night, covered in hair with bright yellow eyes. Their faces are noticeably human in appearance, and they each carry the same ornate wooden scepter with a bright red stone set in one end. These would be the children of the night, Bigfoot, SCP-1000. Entities which no, humans eventually say, brought to the edge of extinction due to their intellectual capacity. The interior of the temple is a maze of small, interconnected rooms, the purpose of which is unknown. Many of them share the same depiction of a massive tree in the middle of a forest, which is actually SCP-2932, Titania's Prison, a place used by the Children of the Night to contain their enemies and anomalous threats including the Fae, and a powerful reality bender named Adam L. Ascend. Other depictions in the temple include Adam men and Ascend. women being thrown into mass graves, children and animals being burned, men being placed into wooden coffins and buried alive, skeletons strapped to trees, and small green humanoids being raped and butchered by the larger, long-haired humanoids. Okay. These are clearly images related to the Children of the Night's wars against humans and the Fae, although why they are here in Autopapadopolis is a bit of a mystery. The central room of the temple contains a staircase descending downwards, although access to it is blocked due to rubble and fallen rock. Long stone sarcophagi line the walls of this central chamber, and individuals entering the room report feeling a sense of incredible unease, and describe hearing scratching sounds from within the sarcophagi. During an investigation in the temple, one team reported finding a room with a door marked with the Foundation's seal, which opened up into what appeared to be an abandoned Foundation site identified as Site 000000. 
Later explorations have been unable to relocate this door. 4840A already said that he knew what the Foundation was, and truth be told, the Foundation has probably been around for quite a while in some form. It's just surprising that they would have a site in such a location. On several occasions, 4840A has mentioned that he is not the only three. Well, it would have been like ancient SCP like Foundation. But the current SCP Foundation has no knowledge of that. SCP Foundation. It's not like us. Oh, we've been a, around since, you know, anomalies have been known. You know, it's going back thousands of years, but it's like, no, we didn't know about them. <laughs> they existed in a different form centuries ago. Person residing within Autopopdopolis currently, and there is another individual in the Temple of Night. He has been reluctant to say anything else about who this person might be, and notably, he's never been seen entering the Temple of Night for any reason. Hmm, maybe. Finally, then, we have the sealed the chamber way. underneath the Stay Grand Hall, the area 4840A refers to as the Old <laughs> Library. The stone door leading to the chamber has two figures depicted on it. The one on the left, composed of a single vertical shaft of ornately decorated gold and silver, with a smooth white stone set in its center. The figure on the right is not a figure, but is instead an inset of the figure on the left. The left part of the door is made of white marble, with bronze hinges and gold fixtures. The right part of the door is bound in rusted iron. Again, these contrary depictions will be explained soon. When the door is open, people in the antechamber claim to be able to hear someone speaking doors. with their own voice from somewhere beyond the door. The giants. The implication in this world. is that the chamber beyond is some sort of void of reality, alien to our understanding, much like SCP-3930, the pattern screamer. 4840A describes the door as a passageway between this place and somewhere else. An old passageway with well-tread steps. He says that the light of the world has long since left the place on the other side, and mortal men can no longer walk it. Now that we have all the imagery down, what we really need is a story to put it all together. And that's where 4840A comes in. A Foundation doctor named Ostrovich interviewed him in 1949, and after he gets over how impressive the tape recorder being used is, he says that the Foundation are seekers of knowledge that want the truth. They remind him of his brother, who was a scholar, possibly the greatest scholar of his time, who could sit across the table from a person and gather everything he ever needed to know about them from a look. He says that the Foundation has a lingering feeling that they are at the center of something much larger than themselves, and that it's not their fault, as the early days were billions of years ago, and almost everyone from that time has since passed. He was there when the world was young, as they watched the Iron God put the flaming stars in the sky, and the God of Flesh loose the first red drips of blood splash against the earth to give it light. Speaking of Mekain and Yaldabaoth, he mentions that he was a boy when the serpent and its dark brother set the foundations of what is and what is not, referring to the titular serpent of the serpent's uh, hand, uh, the entity responsible for the Wanderer's library, and its dark brother is apparently SCP-3000, oh, Anand Vashesha. One stores the knowledge, and, that's and that's the it. other destroys it, basically. He sets out to explain the beginning of all things, and how all things started here in Autopapadopolis, a place where all that is, was, and ever will be was realized. There were only a few of them at the beginning, in a world of infinite mystery. They studied and watched and learned for millions and millions of years, and afterwards they built the city, the first city. He says that in Autopapadopolis is where that which is came to be, and he explains that there were only ever two true gods, is and is not. 
He says that there are things that no, are two guys. and things that aren't. And when the work of is was completed, that remnant of that god became the serpent, an entity whose purpose is only to study that from whence it came and learn those lost truths about itself. The other entity, is not, was its shadow, and one cannot exist without the other. Is not is everything outside of is, and together they encompass true knowledge, everything that ever was or was not all at once. When the world came into being, there was order, and even though there were things roaming around that we now refer to as anomalies, they were confined to this world. Anomalies from alternate worlds and universes were kept apart and far away. A says that the Fey were the first to open their eyes upon the cosmos, because they were not born from this world normally. I like these stories with the SCP, when they talk about like, SCPs like in the realm of like gods, and it's, you think like, okay, like, you know, humans, we have gods, you know, going back different cultures have multiple gods they worship or just one or what have you and it's like looking at this it kind of reminds me of what was that show American Gods except in that show gods were created by humans but they, they start worshipping a particular deity that obviously didn't exist and because they were so passionate so many people were praying for this praying to this uh, deity that it just they manifest it into existence so anything they thought of that this thing has now this god has and can do that's why I remember that they showed that there were multiple different Jesus like they had a white one and a black one and a Asian one because <laughs> like different people worship that religion but they have different depictions of what Jesus would look like you know but it's like it's like this is like in this world like what if these anomalies are just like gods or uh like uh what's what's the demigods or like there and you have also other just creatures as well they're just like they created humans like one of them you know something like that that'd be that's an interesting way of looking at it and just being like oh these are just weird monsters some of them have abilities to go open portals and go into pocket dimensions or what have you just straight up destroy entire galaxies or you know it just like, oh some of these are just actual gods they go what we would think well what we would describe a god to be some of them are and they'd be they could trace it back to oh we think this one actually created humans you know instead being created from the last glittering fragments of is, making them more attuned to the will of creation. They kept to the woodlands and wrote the first music, and A could hear them singing from across the world. A and his brothers came after the Fae, the first men born into the world, cared for by the mothers of the world, the wolf, the bear, the sow, and the lion. As they grew, they gave themselves names and wandered the world, marveling at its mysteries and reveling in the life they had been given. A describes the experience as serenity. During the early days of Autopapadopoulos, it was populated by A and his brothers, the Scarlet King, the Serpent and Anantashesha, well, the Envoy of the Saturn, King. the Dragons and Lords of the Sky, the god of iron and god of flesh, and many others. The greatest of these, so was, however, uh, was the first king of men, of called Asen. A describes him as golden and beautiful. Powerful enough to build mountains, however, was the first king of men, dragons and lords of the sky, the god of iron and god of flesh, and many others. The greatest of these, however, was the first king of men, called Asen. A describes him as golden and beautiful, powerful enough to build mountains, called the sea to bear, and look into worlds beyond. He also was said to carry a lance that could kill gods. 
which, if you recall from That's the Ouroboros nice. cycle, would be the lands of the non-believer. They called him Asem because the word meant is, and they believed that he was the joy of creation given form. Unfortunately, within him grew the first vice, envy, as he looked to the skies and wished them to be his. He decided that uh, he needed to look past... You know, just as a, the way he describes it, it sounds like Lucifer in the Bible. <laughs> He's a, oh, he manifested the first vice, envy. It was like Lucifer. He was... I don't know if he manifested, but... You know, his sin was pride. You know, he was very proud and didn't want to bow down to humans. You know, God told him to. So then he was like, I'm better than you. God, who <laughs> created me. I'm, 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 he's close to him, I guess. He was like, I am better. I'm actually better than you. And God was like, no, no, you're not. <laughs> God said, don't, don't make me take off my belt now. <laughs> Which he didn't. Michael whooped his, you know, if you read any of the stuff, Michael whooped his ass. And I remember I was, I was, a, I was a kid. I thought, oh, so God just grabbed him and threw him down the, the earth. And he hit the earth so hard he went through it into hell. That's why people believe that, that like hell was underneath the earth and heaven is in the sky somewhere. But yeah, I was like, listen, I was like, he sounded like he described this. To the cosmos and take something from another world. So he did. The thing that he took from another existence was a crown. And with it, he declared himself the king of all that is, building his seat of power here in Autopapadopolis. A says that he was still kind and beautiful at this point, but he was crippled by his desire to take whatever he wished from mm. the cosmos. Inevitably, Assem was betrayed, first by his sons. His eldest son envied the crown and demanded that his father pass it on to him. He ended up He's raising an army and savaging his father's lands, laying waste to the world of men. But ultimately, he was struck down by Assem and locked in a stone tomb deep beneath the earth. The middle son also wanted the crown, but he spoke passionately to the people of that world, calling upon their sense and reason to demand that Assem pass the crown to him. The kingdom agreed, bending their knee to him and worshipping him as their god. The, the but Assem put a alive. curse on him to poison both the land and his followers. The middle son was exiled, forced to wander the desolate places of the world until the sun went down in the east. Finally, the third and last son took a much simpler route, sneaking into his father's room while he slept and stealing the crown from his head. Despite its simplicity, this was the greatest betrayal, because Assem loved his third son more than anything. Mm. The son slipped away as Assem's kingdom fell to ruin, and Assem turned the world into a smoking waste, as a number of the people of Autopapadopoulos followed the third son into the shadows. They fled into the night for a thousand years, hunted by Assem and his two other sons, who all desired nothing more than the crown. They had hidden the crown, though, kept away until it faded into myth. When A finally stepped back into the light of day, the world had changed and was no longer a smoking waste. The people who had fled alongside A had started families in this new world, and their kingdom became known as Old Europe, the first true kingdom of mortal men. A came into the realm of Harian, a kindly man with a passion for knowledge and a desire to learn. His family were gentle and good people, and more and more families flocked to Harian's land. A spent many long hours speaking with Harian about the times before the darkness and about the strange wonders he had seen across the world. Before the dark times. This led A to before take his Empire. father's crown that he had stolen and hid away and place it atop Harian's head, calling him Apollyon, the king over the darkness. 
Apollyon went on to build great halls, great temples, and great libraries, and in time all of old Europe swore fealty to him as their high king. Eventually, he passed away, and his son Uvan became high king. At this point, A took his leave from old Europe and returned to Autopapadopolis to rest for the first time in 10,000 years. When he awoke, the world had changed yet again, and the Davites had taken up arms against the kingdom of men. The house of Apollyon had become known as the Sky Kings, and were pillaging and conquering across the continent. In the west, the Fae were dealing with the children of the night, and these wars laid the foundation of the world to come. Eventually, the Sky King Zorus came to Autopapadopoulos, where A was hiding out, and demanded that he give him a Sem's lance. Even if A had wanted to, which he didn't, he couldn't give him the lance because it had been lost a long time ago. <laughs> when Zorus was have. told this, he threatened to turn the city over in order to find it. He's, he's in order to protect here. the city and the deep secrets that it holds, A called upon the last of the titans still on the earth, the great dragon Barata, and together they raised the city into the sky. Separated from the world of men, A watched. I would almost want this to be like someone to take this and do a TV series. But I feel like kind of like a Game of Thrones type thing. But I feel like I don't want anyone taking this and then trying to like, well, I own this now, you know, because somebody tried to do that before, like copyright all the SCP stuff. I think it was in Russia or somewhere over there in that area. I don't think they succeeded. I don't remember why they just like randomly because. This is basically like a project where just everybody just kind of, you know, create their own thing and put it in there. They may have it connect to other people's stuff. It was a random project that I'm just going to copyright it. You know, trying to get a copyright for it. So if you put it on that, I can sue you. It's like, you ain't shit. For thousands of years, as king after king came and went, each carrying on a bloody legacy while wearing the crown of Apollyon. He watched as the Deva hero Gilgamesh slayed Sarus II's only son in single combat on the fields of Jerusalem, and the dread sorcerer Noah el Meto raised the seas to wash away the lands of men until he was struck down by Maladrao the Wrathful. He watched Jore Apollyon sail across the sea to meet with the king of the children of the night, and then watched as she was buried alive to feed the heart of their horrible goddess tree. A watched as the Damn, world turned. These people just suck. Eventually, A watched as Sarus the Eighth crossed the sea to bring war to the Fae, and the aftermath as the Fae princess was buried, and she summoned the three great profanities to curse the kingdom of Apollyon. A watched with sadness as the kingdom fell, and Sarus the Ninth suffered his four betrayals, as his knights became twisted by the dark magic becoming monsters the and dark beasts. Hydro. went to the west, Ogier to the north, Hector to the south, and Lancelot went east, ending up in the city of Autopapadopoulos. In time, the name of Lancelot fell into human legend, becoming a different figure entirely, but this twisted figure became known as Demon Lancelot. This is 4840B, of course the entity that lies dead on top of the Temple of Sunset. Lancelot would have turned the entire city into ruin if not for the efforts of the last great heroes. The dragon Barata, the sea lord Arcturus, the hero Beowulf, and the Deva king Relevant. Beowulf. The battle cost each involved? of them their lives, so demon Lancelot must have been quite the foe. But with Barata's final gasp, he tore out Lancelot's heart. A was alone afterwards, aside from his brothers who still roamed the earth in search of their father's crown. A supposes that his father is out there somewhere crown. as well, if he's not rotting in the heart of the earth. The crown, of course, was lost when the profane dark swallowed up Sarus the Ninth as part of the Fae Princess's retribution. The House of Apollyon ended in a night, 
and the children of the night came across the sea to pick at the corpse of the kingdom of old Europe. Time went on, of course, bringing us to the present. Ostrovich asks him more about the four knights, and A explains that they were each nobles sworn to the house of Apollyon. When the great profanities twisted their hearts, Sarus the Ninth cursed them, and they took on strange and grotesque shapes, the shapes of old fey gods. For Lancelot, who was adept with a mace, his arms were transformed, and his mind became unable to do anything but rage and destroy. Ostrovich says that this all sounds pretty ridiculous. And A agrees, saying that he wouldn't trust her if she believed him without reservation. He has kept much of the old world hidden for many years, but as his life wanes, so does his ability to keep it hidden. He knows about Lahire moving in the west, and also knows that Hector is preparing to emerge in the south. He says that Lancelot has laid here dead for many years, but still does not grow cold. He is also aware of the recent events from SCP-4812, with the profane adamant being seen in the skies, the entity that Lancelot prayed to for overwhelming strength. Things are in motion, and A needs the Foundation's help because he will not live forever. He needs their help in protecting the secrets that this city holds. Ostrovich then asks him what exactly these secrets are, and where they are. A says that they are kept in the old library, the place where is was realized and came to be. Assem built his seat of power directly on top of it, where the greatest authority of all authorities came to rest. Within the old library is the first book, although it's not actually a book. He speaks about the Wanderer's Library, a place where texts describe is and all that is the greatest collection of knowledge in the entire cosmos. The first book, meanwhile, does not just describe is, it is, meaning that it holds the most fundamental truths of existence, those never intended to be understood by man or beast. A has tried to read the book to know these truths so that he could right the wrongs of this world, but he has failed. He also says that he nearly lost himself once in the other book and in it he grew old. The, the other book, book, of course, is the first book's counterpart, the book of Is Not. This book contains the truths of things that cannot be, dark and old truths. His ability to protect the old library will eventually fail, and there are those who know what is here and will seek it out. This is all a little bit tricky to comprehend and Ostrovich isn't sure she'll be able to believe it all, which A understands. He says to watch so the three great profanities that the Fey Princess had summoned, the Profane Restrictor, the Profane Adamant, and the Profane Dark. They are the last remnants of a cursed people, a people who fled from the Children of the Sun and their iron swords, as well as the Children of the Night and their felled scythes. He tells the Foundation to remember what he has said when they see them, because they are from a time long before their history begins. Finally, Ostrovich asks him who he is, and A says that his name was Seth, brother to Cain and Abel, oh, shit. son He's... of Adam el Asem, the first king of men. Oh, it's all, it's Seth all admits comes that together. he was just a boy when he looked into the night sky and asked his father for a star all his own, leading Assem to reach out and pull in an iron crown. That crown ended up driving Assem to madness, Cain and Abel to butchery, and the ruination of their kingdom. Without that mm. crown, Sarus the Eighth might not have crossed the sea, and the descendants mm, of Harry may have been able to fight off the children uh, of the night when they came to old Europe. Yeah, for it. Seth says that there is no more hateful a thing than that crown, the seed at the root of evil, and it was a gift for him. He says that he was once oh. Seth, but now he has lost that name. SCP-4840 is certainly a he little different from Seth a lot of other Seth. SCP articles, much like SCP-4812 like was. 
There are still plenty of questions left about this uh, ancient history. Some that may be answered in the future, Egyptian and many God. that won't. This specific canon of fantastical history and connections is occasionally being referred to as the Cactus Verse after its creator, DJ Cactus, and it likely will continue to be expanded upon. <laughs> Seth is a rather tragic figure, so he is considering Seth. himself responsible for much of the turmoil across the world. But his time will come to an end, so hopefully the Foundation yeah, can step up and take of, over his job to he protect didn't know. the old library. Things are clearly in motion in the dark, and it's likely that, at some point, events from the ancient past will cause some very real effects in the present. I mean, Seth didn't know. I mean, he didn't know what, what, um, that was going to do. Can't really, okay, I thought something had happened. Because the, the, the mouse, I didn't see the mouse move because I didn't touch him my foot. And the thing came out, I was like, I was like, oh man, something happened. But I didn't hear anything, I didn't hear any disconnect sound. I didn't think so. But this thing has just stopped recording before for no reason. But, um, but the camera hasn't. My old camera used to do that every randomly, just stop record. But uh, anyway. Yeah, that was a good one. That was that was interesting. I like that. Uh, I'll be looking at the other ones that you sent me. That sometimes those kind of long. One is like an hour, twenty minutes. Another one like an hour and fifty something. So it's like those might be broken up in parts. <laughs> well, not broken up, not uploaded in a part. I'm talking about like you might in a video you might see me wearing one shirt and then. It'll cut and then I'll be in another shirt. <laughs> so you might see the depend. But uh anyway, hope you all enjoyed my reaction. And well, if you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. Make sure to subscribe when you hit hit that bell with your notified when I upload videos. Comment down below. Share this video. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.